Well, thank you. Sorry, I was in mute. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, my name is Annie Alcocer. Um, I, I am a, a Spanish instructor in the University of Idaho. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, a press book that we worked on. And um, Gemma, do you want to present yourself? Yes, my name is Gemma Morawski. I uh, teach at Boise State as an adjunct instructor. And um, yeah, between me and Annie, we've been co-authoring this book and we're very excited to present what we have and how we, I guess, how I use it in class right now. Okay, okay so, um, okay, okay, so I, I, can you see my, my PowerPoint presentation? Yes. 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 Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, we created a press book uh, called Spanish in the World, um, where we wanted to uh, have grammar, uh, orthography, culture um, for students um, in, that are in novice or intermediate levels of Spanish. Um, so one of the reasons why I got into this project and I thought it was important is because I'm part of the dual credit for the University of Idaho, which is a program where uh, students from high school are able to take, um, take courses and credits from the university. So they, they come into the university already with some uh, university credits. And so, it's sometimes really hard to have the same level of, of what we're teaching at the university and uh, at the high school. So this press book might help us with that uh, gap. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, exp I'll show you the, the book in a second. Another thing that we incorporated is uh, H5P, um, which is it's a really awesome place where you can create activities for uh, for any type of uh, of themes, right? Um, and it it will help, and it, it and it helps our book to be complete. So it has instructions for grammar and and orthography and all these things, but then uh, students are able to practice. So you, you can create these, these really fun and interactive activities. Uh, something that is fun, uh, great of H5P is that you can create your own or you can uh, reuse and share uh, content that, that, you, that you made. So um, I wanted just to show you quickly um, some of the things that you can do with H5P. So um, you can uh, have an idea of what we did. So this has to do with subject pronouns. So this is a drag and drop um, you, where you have uh, the subject pronouns over here and you have to drag them to um, the right place. And they can check to see if it, they're, they're right, right? And if they're not right, they can redo it as many times as they want. And us as instructors can see <clears throat> their, their attempts, which is a great way to see if the material uh, is sinking in and they're understanding what, what um, they have to do. Another a cool uh, thing is mark the words, okay? Uh, this one is for descriptive adjectives, okay? In Spanish, we have feminine and masculine uh, forms, right? So this is a way to practice that. And what students would do would click on if it's feminine or masculine. So they have these two options and they would click on it. And if they were right, it would tell them when they, they checked, right? Um, did the same thing, they can redo it, okay? Uh, dictation is a really awesome tool too. I think all of these are really awesome because uh, like dictation, they are able to listen to, th to my voice. So you create something with your voice, right? You can read a, 
uh, a sentence and students from what you read uh, will write on, on this, this um, section what they're hearing. And uh, this, this also gives the opportunity for you to read slowly, okay, or in a normal pace. So if students can't understand you uh, in the normal pace, they can click on here to, to make it a little more slow. So they write their, the sentence that they listen to and they'll see if they're right, okay. Um, this one, oh, sorry. This, oh, I don't know, okay. Um, in, in this one that you can see here is uh, like a memorama, right? Uh, where you, you have to, you have different uh, squares and I, I put the, the letter, right? The like one times six is equal, of course it's not 10, right? But, um, and then the, the right answer would be written, okay? So the students will have to play that until they get the things right. So I'm going to share, one second, stop sharing. I'm going to share the, the press book so you can see kind of what we created. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm just going to show you the capítulo tres, uh, which is the family. So as you can see, each cap, uh, each um, chapter has a theme. Okay, so we went with different themes. So inside uh, each chapter, we're going to be talking about that theme a lot. Okay, even though we're we're seeing grammar points, we're going to see also a lot of the vocab and and things that have to do with, for example, here. La familia, okay. Um, we incorporated cultura, okay. So in cultura, we give a little more, uh, a, a, a little bit of uh, information about, about what families look like in Spanish-speaking countries. Um, then we have a, or, orthography. Um, we explain different things. So in each chapter, we have something different here. It has to do with accents, which students really have uh, problems with, right? They struggle a lot with the accents. So we, we give them um, all the information they need for the accents. Then um, we have three or four grammar structures uh, that they will learn uh, during the, each chapter, okay? As you can see here, we have possessive adjective, present tense of tener and other expressions of tener, present progressive, differences of ser and estar. And, and this would be like a review of what we already saw uh, in previous chapters which gives them, uh, gives students a little bit of repetition so they, they they don't just use new things, but they, they keep on, um, re, re, it reminds them of what they already saw. And in each of these, we incorporated um, the, the H5P. So there's an H5P activity for each of these uh, grammar structures for students to be able to practice what they, they learn. And um, Gemma was able to use this book uh, for her class this semester. So she's going to talk about her experience uh, with the book right, and, and using it. All right. So I've been using this book. Uh, this is the first semester that I use it. So it's going to be, this is going to be our trial and error. And um, so I use for Boise State, I've been using this semester Google Classroom and I created a Google site where I have all the information plus a couple of things. So as you noted, or you may have noticed, let me share my screen on the book. Um, you notice that, like Annie said, yes, we've incorporated some H5P 
And the issue has been for, you know, whatever reason right now, which, you know, we love technology, but sometimes technology can not, you know, be a little bit tricky for whatever reason. Um, they are just, they're not being completely embedded. And I have noticed that unless it's nice and pretty for students, students don't complete it. Uh, and actually, uh, and I will talk about this a little bit later, I did have a little um, questions to my students. I did a little Google form a couple of days ago with some of my students. And one of the things is we like the graphs. We like to see stuff that is just not, here's your information, monotonous. So in my um, site, if uh, this is my Google site, each chapter has, or each module, which represents each chapter has uh, week by week what we would be doing. And I link my what I want them to do each week to the book. So for example, um, I have here the cultura. We've been, you know, we're introducing the family and um, they have the link to it. So if they open the link, it will redirect them to that part of the book. Because as we know, sometimes you tell them to read something and students just don't. They expect you to just give them the, the, the information. Uh, there's some videos that I add from YouTube, of course. And then in, within that week that I want them to practice specific activities or specific topics, I embed the, um, the activities in there. Uh, so that they can see them and they do them. And interestingly enough, students have said, well, yeah, I've completed them because they're right there. Uh, they're there, might as well complete them. Uh, so, um, so I just embed them in there. Now, the other thing is then they, instead of going back and forth to the different subjects when they have to practice something, uh, I have a page that I will talk about that in a minute. But another thing that I do like with the vocabulary um, from H5P, so like I showed you before on H5P Pressbook, we have the link to it, but it's not embedded. And students then, well, will not really um, look at them or click more than they need to. So I embed, um, I embed them in here, and these are flashcards that I have created. And for each subject, depending on the subject, I am able to put a picture in there. Um, but, you know, mom, dad, it's just, it, it's people. So it's less, uh, let's, I guess it's less, there's less of a chance to just have different women or different men or different whatever to indicate who's who. Um, so I just added voice. So I can for mom or madre y mama, which is mom, I have the voice for it. Madre. And then they can listen to it, they can turn it and they can see what they mean and then move on to the next one. Also, I have some activities that relate to the vocabulary that is not just here, learn the vocabulary, but that's it. So this one is that fill in the blanks, kind of like Annie has talked about, where um, they have to identify who's who by, re by relation, correlation. So the mother of my mother is my, and then they have to um, fill in the blanks. Um, so I also add, because this is the first time I were using the book, of course, I use parts and pieces from the book that, that I used, that I had before, like PowerPoints and stuff. So students have commented, well, you know, we would like more graphs in the books, more pictures, more this, and, um, which is great. And it gives us ideas of what to put in. And that's the feedback that we want. What's the, the pros? What's the cons of our book? Uh, because, and of course, the biggest pro that they have is it's free. I love the price. 
I don't have to pay extra. The, the biggest um, con that students have mentioned so far is I like more pictures. I would like more graphs, which, you know, that can be easily fixed, hopefully in a near future. Um, but um, they haven't said anything like, no, we don't like it. You know, we like one of the things is we like the H5P that they're not for grade because I can't see with H5P, I can't see if they've, you know, done them or not, but it gives that uh, I can practice activities as much as I want without feeling, shoot, if I don't complete this, like perfectly, my grade is going to go down, which is a lot of times, um, especially for beginners, that's their biggest frustration. So having these H5P activities that we create ourselves for our students that, you know, we can't grade, we, uh, but they can see whether they're correct or not um, and see where they're wrong and then come up with, you know, come with questions to class to ask about them. It, it, it gives that stress level of student or the students get less stress because they're not worrying about whether um, they're doing them incorrectly and how many times they've done them incorrectly. So like I've mentioned, uh, I have all these activities and I have a, a place here where I added a page with all the activities that we have done before in my, our different pages and it's taken a minute there to uh, load, but I've um, embedded all of those H5P activities in here. And um, it, it's a great, so one to see in action, for example, is that subject pronoun that Annie was talking about. And so how these would work um, is, all right, I'm just gonna randomly put them in there so that um, you can see how this will, this will um, grade you and how it will grade you. So let's just add over here and there and there. Whoops. Oh my goodness. There. And so check. Oh, you have two out of seven correct. And I can, so, you know, see the solutions and see, okay, now I know why this is this, this is that. And then I can retry it on my own and do it again. Um, Another one that we, I will be incorporating soon, I did it for the first couple chapters. And of course, then um, with all COVID and my kid and, you know, at home doing school, I haven't had as much time as I would like, but interactive videos where you can create a PowerPoint, you can do an explanation and stop the video at certain points and ask them questions that they need to complete about what you just talked about. And um, if they don't answer the questions, they can't move on. You can set it up that way or they can just continue even if they didn't do them correctly or even do them. Um, and this would be great for those classes that are fully online and don't have a Zoom time meeting. Um, so yeah, this is mostly how I use it. I always, in um, embed a link to uh, what I want them to read, oops, where I want them to read from the book. So I do incorporate the book um, a lot. The orthography, um, it's a little bit harder in the sense of accents, the one that Annie showed you, accents. Students want to know why you accent a word, but they don't really want to know the rules. So I give them the rules. And for me personally, I tell them, okay, these are the rules. This is why the, the, the words that we've seen are accented. These are the, you know, and these are why some of them are not. I prefer them to learn how to speak. Um, students uh, will, um, will go somewhere and will not 
will not write what they want to say. They will speak it. So that's my main focus. But um, so I, I give them that. Here's the information. But um, not not. Uh, don't stress the fact that every accent needs to be put in its place, especially for 101 and 102. But point being is that right now um, we're using a book that we have created to our liking and to our way of structuring what should go first that, you know, second, third, and so on for a beginning to intermediate uh, level um, compared to what we've seen in other books and other publishers have put out there, how we would have structured it better. So we've made it ours, I guess. So um, if you guys have any questions. No questions. Um, if if you want uh, to ask uh, us uh, directly questions, uh, we can. I can put the the page for our um, emails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Becca. Oh, another uh, another thing actually that I wanted to mention. One of the when when we meet sometimes with other people, they'll ask, "Well, how are you going to share some of those H five P that we have in in you know activities that we have in H five P?" And right now, we're not sure completely, especially since H five P is a paid um, a program, but. We are creating a um, another web page uh, of or another Google site that uh, it's where we will be putting like act extra activities that we would think that would go great for certain chapters, and adding the H five P there. Hopefully, we're not sure if it will work. Hopefully, that um, people can can um, you use them. In their in in their classes in the future. Yeah, and one of the things that are next in this project, one of the the questions. Um, so we have it right now for uh, novice level. Mm -hmm. So we want to expand it to higher levels of Spanish. So mm -hmm. um, this is something that we are working on um, during this semester. So uh, in summer, uh, Hema can teach 102 with it. <laughs> And then we want to to continue doing it for a higher level. So um, that's that's uh, what is next in this project. So we're gonna continue working on on this. Uh, we're gonna use all the feedback that Hema is getting from students to create the second um, section, right? The sec se second uh, semester and. Um, getting everything, um, trying to make both uh, semesters as equal as possible. Yeah. In my department, they have, and they're very excited about this project because um, as I said, uh, with dual credit is one of our, our biggest things that sometimes we, we have um, teachers that are using different materials than we are. So it's going to help us a lot uh, to level this, um, um, the standards for, for the University of Idaho. And in, in, yeah. at, Boise, at Boise State, we have, um, we've been talking about um, how this will be a great project in the future so that students don't have to pay as much money for a book that eventually they will lose um, access to. Um, after that certain amount of time that they get, and I think it's like 24 months now. So, and Becca has asked what we have learned in this experience, that writing a book is very hard <laughs> and that coming up with a lot of all the little details that um, 
publishers have already with a bunch of people that they worked with is uh, a lot harder than uh, I thought, but a lot of fun, I think. Yeah. And I think one of the, the problems we had with Spanish, because there's so much out there, mm -hmm. is to express things that haven't been expressed before <laughs> because uh, it, it, there's so much information for Spanish. So, mm -hmm. so we didn't want to, to have copies of what other people are saying, but <laughs> yeah. it was kind of difficult to find ways of rephrasing or, or incorporating things that people haven't uh, incorporated before. Well, and also all the different ling or the different Spanish languages, because uh, 22 countries, 21, 22 countries speak the language, but they all have their different dialect and different uh, cultures. So we want to um, we want to incorporate a little bit of that. Um, the biggest thing that I get is, is because I'm Spanish and we use certain words um, that others don't work don't use. Oh, I'm. Oh, I, I never learned that one that they told me not to learn that one. And, and it's just kind of amazing that, hey, there's a lot in this language, but thank you. Yeah. And then there, there's another question about um, uh, recruiting contributors uh, to this project. Um, right now, it's just me and Hema. But I'm, I'm sure that once we, we start using the book more uh, and, and people start seeing it, we're going to try to get people uh, on board. And uh, there might be people that have, um, but I don't know, an expertise in something that we, we're not. And, and so, yeah, that would be really awesome to have more contributors. <laughs> Those words <laughs> are very <laughs> difficult sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you both. Yeah, thank, thank you. Hema. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you, Hema. Thank you, Annie. Um, great topic. A lot of good. Uh, I wish I had that when I took Spanish in college. <laughs>